Nancy Tingey, and today is Saturday, February 1st, 2020. Okay, can you um, share with us one of the earliest or, or an early memory, memory of your parents? Um, I remember when I was, I think I lived in the, the house that was on 10th Street until I was about six years old. I, I went to first grade there. And one of my earliest memories of my parents is how much they seemed to uh, care for us. Uh, Mom, this was during the Depression, so there wasn't a lot of new things. But I remember this pair of corduroy overalls that she made for me. And uh, I wore them every day. And I remember coming home from school one day and there were a couple of ladies on the corner and as I turned the corner and went to our house this way, I heard them saying, poor little Grover boy only has one pair of, or wears one pair of overalls every day, probably the only one he has. I remember getting two or three steps and turning around and saying, I wear them because I like them, because my mom made them for me. <laughs> and then running home. But that was the feeling I had for mom was that she really cared for us. She really wanted us to have good things. And I was I was incensed for them to think that I wore them because that was the only thing I had. That I wore them because mom made them for me. <laughs> was, and, and that was the feeling I had with dad too, is that he really cared. I, I always felt a responsibility to be pretty good because everyone knew dad. You know, whenever I would go to a store or pick up something, they'd say, you're a Delbert's boy, aren't you? Or, you know, something like that. And uh, I always looked up to dad. He was, you know, president of the Chamber of Commerce and he didn't win, but he ran for mayor and uh, just a lot of things like that. So I, I, I really had a comfortable feeling knowing that they really cared for me. Um, my earliest memories tie back to when I still was living in Payson. Um, so that would be pretty sick here, yeah. pretty turning six. <clears throat> I, I remember the house there and it still stands, we can still drive by and see it. Um, that we had kind of a backyard with the clotheslines and mother would always have to, of course, before the days of electric dryers, I remember watching her do the laundry in the old ringer type uh, washing machine and letting me help feed the clothes into the ringer as she would turn it, but being very cautious to not get my fingers caught and uh, that she was teaching us how to, to work hard and gave us the example of a good hard worker, but also being careful for us. And one of the things, she, I, they had a little harness kind of thing, and I must have only been about three or so, I guess, because I, they would put this little harness on me, and then she had a long rope that she tied it to and then tied it to the clothesline when I wanted to play outside and so I could run around and this would slide up and down the clothesline it gave me pretty good access to the whole backyard but I couldn't get away and I guess I must have been wanting to run away sometimes and that's why she did that which was good I remember playing but then one day some stray dog came into the yard and kept jumping on me and I couldn't get away from the dog and I was petrified. <laughs> so that's one very early memory I have of being tied to the clothesline. But um, I, I knew that she wanted me to be safe. <laughs> and uh, what, a, what a good hard worker she was. I remember as we got a little older and sometimes Marilyn and I would get in a little argument or fight or something. Uh, and her way of trying to calm us down was she would start singing 
let us all speak kind words to each other or one of the other hymns that talks about loving your family and so forth but that was one that she used quite often and uh, angry words oh let them never from your lips <laughs> anything on your dad and with my dad oh yes what a hard worker he was and he tried to farm and tried to and I, I remember very vividly, and I can still see the color and smell when he would come in from a day of picking tomatoes on the farm. And it was meal time, and he went to the sink to wash his hands, and he had lathered them up really good, and the soap lather just became this beautiful chartreuse, chartreuse green color from this tomato of vines, all the tomato huh? vines on his hands and that was a fascinating thing to watch how that soap would just bubble up and and be that pretty color but it had that definite smell of the I'm sure I would recognize if I smelled it again of the tomato vines mm. well, and that's then, great and that you know gardening was such a big part right, of his he was life such yeah. a, as you remember he was such a great gardener I remember he would sometimes let us go when they would take a load of peas that he had pulled to the binary and we'd ride on the wagon and, and watch them unload the peas. That's a very brief, I don't have a lot of details, but he, he did let us go see that once. Huh. And the wagon loaded with all the pea vines. They just pulled up the whole vines and some way I guess there was a machine there that would pick the peas off or and, something. And the empty pods. Huh? Uh -huh. Interesting. Yeah. So, so as you think of your parents, can you share with us a memory that is an example of a character trait of theirs that you admire and, and want them to be remembered? Um, I would say uh, hard workers and generous, uh, thoughtful, um, One other little thing about Daddy, I remember, he always had his pocket knife in his, a uh, little pocket knife in his trousers pocket. And if he'd be standing talking to someone just on the lawn or yard outside or something, and he'd spot a dandelion in the grass, he'd take his knife out and dig that little out, <laughs> weed out of the way. He just wanted to keep such a great, neat yard and get rid of weeds. And, and uh, of course, he was a great builder. Uh, he, I got this square, this metal square that I, in my mind stands for his desire to always have things done right. Uh, you know, just exact and, and honorable in all, everything that he did. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. How about your mom? Oh, and the same with her. Uh, she, she just was such a hard worker and uh, devoted and I mentioned their friendship with Heber and Edith Bauer and uh, how grateful mother and daddy were when the Bowers moved in uh, next to them uh, because they were also committed to the gospel and, and they hadn't had friends before that were that, that committed and, and uh, they, they just built a lifetime friendship because they had the same goals of being true to the Lord and raising their families, and yeah. working hard. That's great. Yeah, and, and I think quite a lot of the same qualities uh, because it was depression time and hard work was that was that was the way you stayed alive. It was just working hard, and mom and dad worked hard. One one memory I have of mom. She always cooked really uh, good meals and and for a lot of kids, big meals. And I remember of uh, uh, quite often, not always, but quite often when we would get through and she'd want us to clean up, everyone bring their dishes in and so forth. And I can not, not, not real often but every once in a while I can remember of just having a feeling I really ought to help mom I said I'll wash the dishes you know and uh, try and wash them 
because we had no dishwashers then it, it, everything was just done by hand and I remember mom really saying oh, that is really nice I really appreciate it as I look back I wish I'd have done it more but I'm glad I did it the few times I, I did do and then with dad uh, again he, he he was very very committed to to mom to our family to his work to the ward to Idaho Falls you know he just he, he was really really committed the only time I can ever remember of him getting a little angry with us is if we would ever say anything bad or even intimate that we're disrespectful to mom or if we were fighting with one another he'd say, he just he didn't sing songs to us he just pulled us <laughs> apart <laughs> said 